Today, we'll try to get to level 70 as quickly as possible with an enhancement shaman, but I can only use armor and weapons from the dead bodies I kill. But that's not hard enough, so I'm limiting myself to only questing. No battlegrounds, dungeons, raids, or arenas, and war mode must be turned on as soon as possible. That's still just a little bit too easy, so one more additional rule is that I must use the most previously looted items, so it could be an upgrade or a major downgrade. Good luck, heads with fists. Now the first three levels don't matter as they're the equivalent of a naked guy being wanted by the state of California. But at level four, I managed to track down my first weapon, the beat stick. And just like that, we've won the beat the meat challenge. But there are still about 66 levels to go and this is just the first item. I guess, I guess there's more video to watch. Uh, uh, Level 8 has a couple of new pieces of attire for us, the first being the cuffs from your bedside, and the second is anti-hoof resistant shoes. Just kidding, you can only wear those as anklets. Eventually we'll hit level 10 and take up our ingenious occupation, enhancement. Now it goes without saying that enhancement as a specialization requires dual wielding to be at its maximum effectiveness. And while I do have this big beat stick on my back, this will only take me so far in being this weird hybrid build, so hopefully this won't be a problem for long. For now though, the challenge isn't that difficult yet, so I decide to bump it up by going to the one place I know there are more challenges to be had, Outlands. Welcome to the mini series of surviving the Outlands jailhouse. Here are some tips to help you in this endeavor. First, if you find yourself surrounded by red oryx in a red zone with a bunch of red quests, establish dominance by stealing the nearest person's pants. Next is to keep a good head on your shoulders. In my case, I got both within a minute of each other, so I was already ahead of the other beat sticks in the peninsula. Now, you'll be killing a lot of people in your stay in the jailhouse, so just go get some gloves to bury the bodies underneath the red sand of the land. While we're doing all this, you'll still want to steal all the items from your victims, such as a shiny new staff and a new pair of boots you still can't wear. Remember, hooves. After this, you'll be led to step 69, where you'll learn the art of trading. After all, I traded this demon's life for my long lost mother fist with fist necklace, followed by yoinking another pair of pants to establish my dominance. Once again, a pair of racers. There is no joke here. And if you felt like pants were lacking for the past two victims, then get a third pair. I don't know why you need them, I guess wear them as a hat at this point. Once you do all that, serve your time, and at level 17, you'll realize the jailhouse had a valuable lessons for life, learning, and lore. However, that's overshadowed by the fact that you're still an enhancement shaman who has not gotten his dual wielding abilities. So you'll need to up the ante and face against the Lich King's minions to get the weapons and challenges you're looking for. Now, one thing you need to learn about the undead is that they're already dead, so their stuff is kind and it just free real estate. I mean, all the legalities of their equipment being theirs went out the window when they died. It's not your fault that they decided to come back to life, so grab the shoulders off that footman over there. Uh, you can send the family a letter and give them condolences later if you wish. Then get to level 20 to turn on war mode and summon a totem that does a lot of damage, as well as whispers earthly advice in your ear. And hey, since you've already committed enough war crimes to the rest of us, you may as well continue to squeeze into the undead organs and see what they were digesting. So head on over to the big city of enchiladas and stock up on the latest decaying goods. On your shopping list, you'll want to take some bursting shoulders from this big dead thing, then meet the two abomination brothers, Kill and Bill, for their crown and gloves, respectively. Of course, after eating those enchiladas, your pants are likely soiled, so grab some new ones from the city clerk. And then you'll be ready to kill the Lich King, save the world, and become the champion of the people. Except we're not trying to save the world, we're looking for a challenge, and a couple of one-handed weapons to give us the power we so desperately strive for. And as fun as it is to wail in skeleton number two at level 24, it's still not enough. So to find out what really attracts the big guns for a challenge, I turned at the hardest, most brutal, and most muscular in World of Warcraft's history, pandas. I mean, look at those abs. Now, pandas aren't a race of people you want to mess around with. They've got the brew to back it up, so grab a pair of pants from a goblin that wouldn't fit you. Uh -oh. Your priority is to prove supremacy on the Pandar and Homefront, but you can't just rattle like six or seven monkeys. They've got the advantage here. So start small, head into the wilds to live off bamboo, and craft your shoulders from your chosen prey. Uh -oh. Oh. Then get another pair of shoulders to stack on the previous pair. No one will say that you don't got a good shoulders on your head, except for you, because because you got a hood afterwards. Congratulations. And then after some time, you'll be ready to. Uh, uh, what were we doing again? <clears throat> Something about pandas and uh, loony armor from dead bodies. Uh, oh, oh yeah, the challenge we were. Um, uh. 
I don't feel so powerful. Look, aside from the conga line of monkeys we encountered earlier, pandas don't have a lot of challenges or mesas to conquer for our enhancement elemental shaman monster. So it's time to head back to the Cataclysm and see what they're doing in Mount Hyjal. After all, I'm confident the challenges we'll face here will be fair and not from random dudes flying out of the sky. I was wrong. It's time for Operation Twilight. I'm gonna go ahead and explain what this means. T is for the twine shoulders from these ogres, as if I didn't have enough of them to stack on top of one another. W is for the wrist protection, despite only flailing my arms back to send lava bursts instead of lava lash. I is for I can't believe I got another fucking two-hander. What is this game? G for generated numbers, because I have fewer subscribers than the repeats I get for gear. I for the... H for a oh whole boy, these shoulder pads sure don't know when to let up, and T for thanks for nothing, Mount Hyjal, I'll go find a better expansion to get what I need. By this point, we've gone through the equivalent of four expansions and have no way to play the Enhancement Shaman, which is par for the course of the challenge, but surely Legion will get us there. After all, you get a free weapon in your happy demon meal. Or... <laughs> So I thought. It turns out if you do the campaign, Legion weapons drop out of whatever you're fighting and land on the ground nearby. And that's technically not a dead body, unless you think Azeroth is dead. So we'll continue the hybrid style for now, and I've chosen Azuna to continue honing my skills. Let's beat up some demons. Or actually, scratch that. Let's get beat up by demons. Twice. This is starting to become the challenge we're looking for. The problem was my chest was too exposed, and demons love bare chest. I mean, look at the demon hunters as an example. So I covered it up with a jerkin. Now let's jerkin some demons. And by demons, I mean catfish. This one wasn't the drain I signed up for on Legion Dur. Pretty poor bra, too. I got another two-handed weapon, though, in Legion. You know, a place where you get automatic weaponry. Okay, look, at level 45, I still can't use half of my abilities. The entire enhancement shaman tree is just a Build-A-Bear without a base. And bears love bases. So I'm heading to a base in battle for Azeroth's Boralus. This seems to have solved my woes and worries because hallelujah, after making this transition, I got a main handed mace at the same level. That's right, folks. Finally, after 45 hybrid shaman shenanigans, we'd made it to enhancement shamanhood. And I had won this challenge. Or did I? It turns out to unlock the full abilities of Shaman, you need to dual wield. I still cannot use any of my abilities from the enhancement side of the tree. We were dashed of all hopes once again, everybody. Back to square one, and this time in an even weaker piece of equipment. And in my depression, we stumbled into this company building, claimed insurance fraud, and collapsed on the ground via a blade storm. The resulting blow to the head may lead to some strange dreams, like love's first encounter, resulting in death by exhaustion. Again, twice. So wake up and do what most people do when they want attention. Commit mass genocide on pirates. They'll get you in the right headspace and make you feel like a superhero. And while you might make some new friends and get a salty sea cap, this still won't change the fact that you're a half-limp shaman who hasn't found his hammer, so it's obvious what needs to happen. Go torment the people you've killed in the afterlife and give them to get you the hammer that you deserve. Look, you've been patient up until now and have searched worldwide for the chance to be the aspiring shaman you've wished to be. But now, it's time to seek other methods. But it's not easy. After all, even the visions of your past deeds are enough to cause you to take a trip to the Bastion break room. But thankfully, in that break room, they've let out a wild fox looking thing. No one knows why it's here, so if you decide to go ahead and force its paw off, put it out of its misery, and shape that bad boy into your very first mace. And just like that, after nearly 53 levels of searching, you're finally ready to be an Enhancement Shaman. Congratulations to you. Kind of. But progress is progress, and aside of a couple getting vengeance for no. you killing their fox memory thing, most of Bastion Absolutely is easygoing not. until level 58. Maybe the problem is that we're so focused on our world that we forget that there's a whole other world with more orcs to kill. After all, the orcs of Draenor are a Draenei's mortal enemy, so let's go march in there and get the challenge that we- Now we're level 60 without much issue. Hey, it's a boat! We're heading to the Dragon Isles. Now, as this is the current expansion, the challenge will really start to ramp up from here, but if you take the lessons we've learned to heart, you'll be okay, starting with the jailhouse rules. Just be careful not to run into people with more giant hammers than your half-hearted lava lashes. Step one, steal pants to establish dominance even though they should not fit you because they're double your size. Go put them on and then get soggily soaked in the shorelines of Sally's Discount Murlocs. Don't worry, if you get too wet, there's a guy up here willing to dry you off. Wind so powerful that his expertise will blow you away. Once you've been blown, you can pawn the hammer off of this fellow inmate that moment you've been waiting for. You've won this challenge and nothing can kill you now. You're invincible. Okay, yeah, this will still be difficult. 
I'd buckle your newly found belt, boys. This is going to get primal. Now, I know you've got Ghost Wolf activated, but you might as well be a ghost duck because you're certainly a sitting duck anywhere you go from this point on. Gangs of three to five, don't expect that to not go awry. So the elemental, empowered by its primal master, if it gets in the mood, it'll kill you too. It's a good thing water elementals have a heart, so you can rip it out and make a chest piece. But that's okay, we're going into the second part of this lesson today. Steal from the undead. But instead of undead, it's mammoths. Big mammoths that will trample you in any way you like. And they're not even charging a fee, just charging at your soul. But so long as you pretend the centaur you're massacring is undead, it doesn't count as a war crime, and you can take the wrist if you want. You may even snap out of it when you realize that they also can't wear shoes, so they're just walking around with them in hand like you do. Aww. You've made a friend. Next, we turn to our Pandaren friends, getting drunk with lightning instead of brew. Weather the storm and bury the bodies in the isolation of a hazardous hurricane. Then, when you get to the Azure Span, watch Pandaria come to you and teach you that you're still not ready to take on Pandaren might. Once it's done, fly around for a bit and get yourself primal fire punch you've been desperately needing. Using the Burning Legion's tactics, we can quickly get through the following parts. The first step is to die. Don't worry, you'll respond to Twisty Nether. What is it with this game and giving me bracers? Eventually you'll be ready to call your pirate friends to save you in Valdraken, only to realize that pirates don't come into big cities like this one. Or this one. And especially not this one. In fact, you may want to skip the pirate lesson altogether, it's very specific to shorelines only. But of course, once you get to the final level, how can we get one of the biggest lessons of them all? Operation Twilight! Let's go over to Jumbotron, shall we? T stands for Town Rip, after a nasty bleed takes all the wind fury from your charges. W stands for Why am I taking on more than four mobs at this point? I'm squishy as hell. I stands for Ignite, which the dot on this guy did to knock me out. L stands for the like you'll leave on this video once you've learned your lessons. I stand for the individuals who have nothing better to do while they wait for Mythic Plush. G stands for Gosh damn it, fuck! H stands for the Hellfire of a Murloc's Kiss. Please do not kiss Murlocs. The T stands for the Twilight Hulk because the punch was so good you had to experience it in double time. Eventually with all these lessons intact you'll reach the pinnacle of level 70 and with the challenge done in 22 hours and 57 minutes and 37 deaths, minus 3 of those with war mode, you'll be left saying, what was the point of all this? 